Right guys, we're in for a real treat today. Dear friend of mine, one of the most interesting guys in the clothing industry, creative director of Drake's, it's Mr. Michael Hill, and today we're talking about his two watch collection. We're actually here on Savile Row in one of the nicest stores that you'll ever come across. Michael, thank you so very much for joining thank me today. You, Justin. <laughs> how are you, my boy? How's, how's, yeah. how's summer? How have you been? Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's been, a, a, I guess, a you know, fairly difficult few years for a lot of people, but uh, no, we're, we're, we're having a, a, good, a good year and going in the right direction again. So, uh, you know, lots to do, but things are, things are calmer on the, on the work front, so that's good. And, uh, yeah, excited by what lies ahead. Now there are there are there are there are a couple of things which I know that we've got in common: a love of clothing, a love of watches. But but actually, more than that, I know that that, that you've got a love of sport. My my passion is 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 boxing, strangely, hmm. and and it's something I'm really kind of conflicted by, I suppose, because it's a it's obviously a very very brutal um, sport if it is a sport. Um, but I but yeah, somewhat of an addiction and something I I love. I love that. I guess what it is, maybe what I'm looking for in a contest is to find out, you know, who's the who's the best, mm. <laughs> who's the strongest, mm. who who can uh, who can prevail, and that seems to me like a bit of a kind of ultimate test of those things. Because you're absolutely right, there is nothing like. I mean, I grew up playing team sports, yeah, and and, and that's one thing that con that confrontation as a group. Sure. But as an individual, when there's no one around you, when you're standing there waiting to go out, and there's no one around you. <sighs> That's a special thing. Who, who's your favorite boxer? Do you have a favorite boxer? Oh God, I mean, I suppose I sort of look back to the, the, the sort of the glory days of uh, the, uh, the the top middleweights, someone like Marvin Hagler, I suppose. Mm. Um, but yeah, Duran, Hagler, Duran, they were just nothing could nothing could stand in, in the case of Hagler. You know, nothing could stand in his way. Um, and you know, if you watch Hagler Hearns, you know that that is just the most incredible three rounds you'll ever see in your life. Yeah, you know, the way the way he lived his life as well. Ah, oh, Duran, I remember reading his um, biography a few a few years ago. One of them, um, just just an amazing life story in terms mm. of you know where these guys come from and and how they've you know built their lives out of you know very often nothing. Mm. There are a few sports that 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 celebrate the mentality of the individual. I yeah. like it. There is something sort of hu very human in, in the, the, the challenge, the struggle, the training. Yeah. The other love that we both share is, is food. But, but interestingly, I do see themes in Drake's of your influence across both of those, both sport, athleticism, athletics, sure. slash comfort maybe, yeah. and, 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 and food. What do, you, what do you think? Is that conscious or is that something uh, that... I wonder. It's probably not really. It's maybe just a, a question of life and that sort of ultimately infiltrates you know what what you do mm. um and you know I've, I've been been lucky enough to to travel and to experience um you know many many different cultures and therefore you know eat eat and drink many different wonderful wonderful things in wonderful places and um and i, and I suppose it's more that 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 life that culture i suppose mm. somewhat um is very close to and influences who we are and what we do. It's a it's a whole world, and and hopefully that comes down to the materials we use and 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 the whole world of craft around how we make things and how we how we celebrate that and how we enjoy then wearing those items and talking to our customers about them. I think it's uh, you know the special special things that very often come from you know long-standing traditions, and I think that's. Um, what a wonderful world to be involved in it. The, the Drake's newsletter, and anyone who's not signed up absolutely should. It's dangerous for a number of reasons, but it's the only newsletter I get in my inbox that makes me want to travel and makes me hungry oh, at the same oh, time. Oh, nice to hear. And, and, and the, <laughs> the way that, and, and actually, and actually it's, it's interesting because there isn't another brand I can think of that has been able to maintain, and I love the idea of brand building. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in this idea of how these th items come together, people come together, and then out the end of it, we've got a brand, we've got something that we can yeah. summarize, we can yeah. instantly recognize. Totally. And actually, you know, Drake's, the, the, even to the visuals that you shoot a dinner, a lunch, a, it's clearly you. Well, and how, that's, how, that's how, how nice to hear. You know, we're doing, we're doing what we love mm. and what we enjoy. And, um, you know, we were doing a, a, a great event last night over at, uh, with our friends at Rita's um, mm. with, with 
Chris Contos, the photographer, and mm. um, you know that that was something that came together. You know, just just friends wanting to to spend <laughs> an evening together. And we all invited some friends, and we, you know, we had a lovely evening. Um, so it's yeah, it's lovely to hear that. So basically, what you're saying is you've built a business and a life for yourself around the stuff you love doing. Is that what we're hearing? So food, oh uh, clothing, style, people getting together, drinking. That's basically what it's, you're saying. It's when you put it like that, it's not, it's not so terrible. But, but you know, when you, when you're doing it during the day, you know, you're fighting to get stuff done. It's mm. it's a challenge as well. You know, it's um, oh, you know, we're we're paddling pretty hard mm -hmm. under the under the water. Mm -hmm. There's um. Yeah, it's 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 great if it all looks like it's uh, you know a complete breeze, but yeah. but it's, yeah, it's a you know it's a it's a fair old grind at the same time. But I, I think you know it should be as well. It's Absolutely. Interestingly, one of the extensions, one of the things that people will recognise about you personally and about Drake's is this idea that in some ways you pioneered the non-compete idea, <laughs> which was the idea of taking a watch, <laughs> taking a watch like that, which we all know instantly as a swatch pairing it with something maybe more formal. And actually, you know, yeah. since then, I I've deployed that uh, strategy going to watch events where there's an expectation maybe that you'd wear something quite fancy, and then actually you, you come out with this. Yeah. And actually, increasingly, more and more big, big, big CEOs out there. I think whenever you see articles out there, you're like, yeah. these big, powerful characters, and then they've gone for something yeah. like that. Tell me where the interest well, in Swatch well, came again, from. Again, it's probably not something kind of necessarily terribly kind of thought through, but, um, you know, and, and I remember, um, you know, when, when I was working with Michael Drake, you know, he would, he would, you know, often wear a swatch. It was just, uh, you know, that the whole thing of, you know, when you, when you, when you're, you're dressing and you're putting your clothes on, it can take a little bit of time to build up what works and what doesn't work. And, and, and once you've, once you've figured that out, um, maybe, maybe you're, you're a little more assured in your, in your choices, in your clothing and, and, and how it all works together. Um, and, and maybe as you get a little more more confident, you like to to, to throw something off a little bit, just mm -hmm. just to, I suppose, find your own lane, mm -hmm. and um, and I suppose that's that's something that you know maybe at, at the time was easily done with you know something like a colourful swatch. Apart from anything else, the beautiful watches were mm -hmm. you know were really expensive, mm -hmm. so I didn't have a you know a fancy watch. Um, and yet, I mean, I didn't, didn't think I needed one either. Mm. But, but that kind of, you know, for example, you know, that did everything that, you yeah. know, I could ask. It kind of, it, <laughs> it told the time and, you know, there was, a, I guess, maybe a, a sense of, a sense of fun, a sense of joy. Sweet. There's not another doll like it. There's not another doll like it. And, and, and I have to say from a design perspective, what's catching me here is the central reserve that's sort of mirrored, that keeps catching the light. The sub dials have a blue, for the, for the super watch geeks out there, the sort of chronometra blur from F.P. Jean-esque blue, which is a very different price point watch. And then the, the, the side mirroring as well, just between the, the one o'clock and the sort of four o'clock. But the audacity to then put it on this strap, yeah. this, this, as if the dial wasn't enough and the pushes weren't there enough. There you go, the keep going. The audacity then to have that. Yeah. And the stretching, I mean, I, that's an amazing bit of design in itself. Isn't it? Yeah. Incredible. 37 mil as well, which is a great size. Totally. And in many for, ways, for, yeah, what, you, what you've done here, Mike, and you, you're the first to do it on the series, is for all the, the OCD collectors out there, you've <laughs> actually come out with two 37 millimeter watches, right? Because this one yeah. here is, I believe, we may get corrected in the comments, but also 37 mil <laughs> though. In many ways, you've got two really versatile utility-based watches, I would say. Yeah. Well, where, did, where did this one come from? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a gift through the through the business 12 13 years ago something like that so mm. it meant a lot i think we were you know we were we were building the business and uh going in the right direction and so um yeah it was it kind of meant a lot and was very kind and uh yeah i think you maybe you, you sort of treasure it all the more for mm. that and it, it you know came from someone who's a a keen collector who who knew his knew his onions <laughs> and um and i guess i had always you know said but i you know, I can't wear any of these big watches. Well, you know, they're not, they're not always that size. You know, there are, you know, one or, one or two they made are, are a little smaller and... and um, Had you suggested that the Submariner or Tudor was a brand you liked? I liked the fact that it wasn't a Rolex. Mm -hmm. And you know, at the time... Even I mean, though you've I, got a crown on well, the, a Rolex I, crown I don't think I even knew that until I got the watch. <laughs> I had the case back as well. That they were, um, 
you know, affiliated. The, the same company, yeah. Mm. Um, but Tudor, the idea of Tudor being just a little bit, it visually looked the same, but that, there's a little, yeah, a little twist. I suppose so. It felt, felt a little, That's yeah, exactly. a little, a little more subtle, and, and the navy element as well. Yeah. You know, for us, you know, we've, you know, I suppose it's always been navy rather than black. That's always been, mm. been our thing. And uh, so that, my, you know, my father's always worn a lot of blue and um, a lot of navy blue, and so it kind of, um, yeah, just uh, felt like felt like the right thing. It yeah. looks like it's. It's been worn in, in a yeah. very respectful manner, yeah. but it's still worn. And the interesting thing is, is that it's 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 a smaller case size, obviously, to mine, which is the, the 40 millimeter, the more traditional size. Um, but what's lovely is that this has a snow cone um, at 12, 6, and 9. Yeah. And that's not something that um, that's not something you see very often. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's it's a more unusual um, variation of Submariner and meters first, which in Rolex terms is interesting as well. So the sort of geekiness, like the the, the uh, inside baseball, I've never really understood what that meant, but I, I, <laughs> as an Englishman, but the inside baseball term is like the super geek thing. Sure. That's, that makes this watch really, really interesting. Um, and you've taken it around the world, you've worn yeah, it swimming, you've worn it. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, um, yeah, and it's and it's not tricky to set the, um, I think, you know, on, on some of them, mm. it's a bit of a nightmare when you travel and you've mm. got to set the date and, you got to go forward a Quick month and all that, all right, but yeah. that one, yeah, easy. I'll tell you what, I've enjoyed um, learning a bit about them as well. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, it's just, it's just, it's just so interesting. I, I, I love the sub, and I'm, I'm exactly the same. I, the reason I love this is that on first glance, people may fairly be mistaken for thinking it's, it's a Rolex, and of course, it has got touches of Rolex on it. But the fact it's Tudor is, is yeah. really interesting. Totally. And both have, uh, yeah, you've got the shield, the old shield um, logo on there as well. Just, just really, really interesting. Um, yeah. What's next, Mike? I know we, we've in the past talked watches. Sure, we've talked late at night about various vintage Pateks. You know, not, not, not big glitzy things, but just sure. things that I, I think represent good value now. Yeah. Maybe neo-vintage, smaller oh, case sizes. That would be nice, is there something? Is I've, there something... I've, I've managed to, I have <laughs> managed to resist. It's the dangerous thing of working fairly close to the Burlington Arcade. <laughs> there's obviously, there's quite a few watches in there. Mm. And I had seen a, um, an old, Patek that had been in the window for a long time and it, it had been in for about a year. So I said to myself, well, if it's still there in six months, six months, but uh, thankfully it wasn't <laughs> and I missed it and that was that and I'm, yeah, no regrets. It's fine. It's only a watch, but um, it's easy to get sucked in, isn't it? Mm. There's, there's these, what do they call them? The sort of, you know, the gateway drugs. And then after that, you're away. You're, oh, on, God, you, yeah. you're on to the next one. And just to close, for those that aren't away, the store now in London on Savoy does carry vintage watches yeah. as well. But, 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 but I think really nicely curated, not a huge lineup, but yeah. maybe less than 10, maybe under 2,000 pounds. So, so good value, interesting yeah. chronographs and others that are That's not it. maybe from the big, the big names out yeah, there, but, no, but really exactly, nice. Exactly, and um, no, and that's been good fun, and, uh, and we've, we've sold them well. God, and that gonna... must be dangerous as well. So as if it's not dangerous enough, with, all, <laughs> with the jackets, with the, oh, the, the yeah. button-down shirts, the, the Skirt, jeans. Skirted with that danger. The Aldens on the wall, what do you do? Yeah. Doors to the store have opened. We've got people coming in, so we need to end, but thank you so, so much. Not at all. Lovely, Great pleasure. Lovely to see you. Thanks, well. Justin. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>